So getting high quality video out of your GameCube is a surprisingly difficult affair. Um, whereas other platforms like the Xbox and PS2 had uh, both first party and third party component cables back in the day that were relatively cheap and pretty common, the GameCube didn't. The GameCube only had one component cable, and that's the Nintendo official manufactured one. Also, back in the day, they weren't exactly common, and they were really expensive back then, and time has only exacerbated this. If you wanted to get high quality video out of your GameCube nowadays, you're looking at buying one of these bad boys for probably over $200. Back around 2015, an alternative arose thanks to the open source project GC Video. Because of GC Video, GameCube HDMI mods became possible and offered a pretty good alternative to getting component cables. Just now though, Badass Consoles has started shipping the beta for their plug and play solution called GC Video X. It simply plugs into the digital AV port and outputs an HDMI signal. But how much better does the GC Video X look than these component cables, or the Wii for that matter? That's exactly what I'm going to show you. So the lineup for high quality video cables for GameCube games goes something like this. GameCube component cables, Wii component cables via the Wii, and now GC Video X. You could theoretically also buy an HDMI adapter from Zelda X Pro, but his first revision of the GC Video Plug and Play fried at least one GameCube because of its poor design, so I wouldn't recommend it for obvious reasons, even if he is on his third revision. If you were playing Game Boy games on it though, you would probably want the cleanest 240p signal possible, and in theory, that might be outputting an RGB signal over SCART. Unfortunately, to do that with the GameCube, you have to get a PAL GameCube. So that would mean in order to test it, I would have to have a PAL GameCube, PAL Action Replay so I can boot a uh, homebrew, and uh, a RGB SCART cable designed for that console. And as curious as I am of whether or not that's the best signal possible, I'm not going to spend almost $200 to find out. It's a lot of money. Two more notes before we start the comparisons. My video is recorded losslessly and handled delicately to retain all of its visual quality. This creates gargantuan video files, but it's necessary to display the quality at hand here. The whole point of this video is to show you the image quality of the various cables, not how much I can screw it up and post. Your ability to notice the differences between these images is highly dependent on the environment in which you watch them. So, what I would recommend is a powerful desktop PC that can do 4K playback. Um, and having a monitor, even a 1080p one, uh, because YouTube horribly compresses everything below 4K. Uh, I would just really recommend this, though, though the differences should still be apparent in 1080p. I'm just saying for the best case scenario. The first test may be one where the difference is not as obvious. These comparisons will get easier to notice the difference in as we go, but I thought this would be a good starting point. Now then, if you look at the end of Majora's Spikes, you'll see harsher contrast with sharper pixels on the HDMI signal. Wii is the softest output and lacks contrast in comparison, and the GameCube component looks fairly good even next to the HDMI. Cutting to the text about Majora's Mask, the sharper image provided by the GC Video X and GameCube component cables becomes more obvious. The Wii's component out lacks the color accuracy and nuance necessary to make the orange in the title look right, and the text overall is smoothed over quite a lot. Next is the video tests from the Smash Bros. smoothing option screen. There's an interesting difference between the color balance of the three inputs, which you can see here. The GC Video X is neutral white, while the Wii and GameCube component are both tinted towards green and green blue. And of course, the image is the sharpest on the GC Video X and smoothest on the Wii. Also, if you're wondering why the second test square from the right is blurred in the middle, that's because Smash Bros. runs at a higher than normal resolution and blurs those pixels together. That's just how it is. An executive producer of ours actually checked this out for us via an emulator. I think this test is super helpful for comparisons. As we swipe over to HDMI, you can see the sharpness increase and coloration improve. And now as we change to the Wii, it, it looks really soft. Surprise, surprise. I'm going to cycle through these one more time. And now split the image. On the right is the GC Video X, and on the left is the GameCube component. And now the Wii. Here's the Zelda 2 level in Smash Bros. 
Since it's such a large level, it helps show the differences in visual quality between the three of these cables. Here's a zoom in on Link that I think proves interesting. If you look at the GC Video X, Link's green hood is glowing slightly to the left of itself, painting the sky green for a single or maybe two lines of pixels. His gloves do the same, painting objects one to two pixels to the left of it, slightly brown. I examined a still frame capture of this shot in Photoshop after finding this oddity and confirmed that it wasn't my video editor introducing the error. The thing is that the GameCube's internal digital video signal is not a full 444 resolution image and is 422, which means that the color resolution is half the resolution of the image. What is happening is the GC Video X's method of sampling this 422 resolution source video and converting it into a 444 signal is different from how the GameCube's component cable is being converted either via the processor on the cable or my capture card. In fact, if you look close, you can see similar artifacts on the GameCube component video, but they mostly go to the right of Link instead of the left. They also aren't as pronounced as the GC Video X's due to the relative softness of the component output. It's possible that a different sampling method could be used and would look different. Also, you might notice the Wii is still over there looking like crap. Switching over to some Game Boy stuff, this is Castlevania Aria of Sorrow running on the Game Boy interface software. The right side of the screen is the GC Video X, and the left is component through the OSSC. The right looks slightly better, but both resample the pixels in a way that makes it not quite as sharp as emulation. In fact, I wonder if RGB out on the PAL GameCube could beat this. In theory it could, and I would love to test this, but I'd rather not spend $200 to do so. Of course, SCART RGB can't do 480p progressive scans, so when it comes to your standard GameCube games, the GC Video X is still an obvious winner. With those tests out of the way, I thought I would just let some game footage roll while I talk about my experiences in the beta. The GC Video X only had one glitch during the beta, and Badass Consoles told me right as I was finishing this video that he fixed it. That's the whole point of a beta, to find problems and fix them. Even still, I thought I'd share what happened just because I thought it was very interesting. Because the GC Video X's custom firmware has added support for the specific resolutions of the Game Boy interface, as compared to the open source GC Video firmware, the video modes that the Action Replay and SD Media Launcher use were found to cause odd problems with video output during the beta. I found out that if I unplugged the adapter and plugged it back in, it would fix the problem instantly, but Badass Console says the problem is solved and the final firmware won't have these issues at all. Aside from that, I haven't had any weird problems, and there are a lot of cool features I wouldn't expect. For example, in 240p resolution mode, there's a line doubler that's sort of like the OSSC, and the 480i mode has a line doubler as well, which I presume works about the same as the Bob D interlace mode on the OSSC. Neither of them introduce any real latency, and switching between these two modes is basically instantaneous. I would kill to have a device or mod like this for the PS2, since there really isn't a definitive video solution out there. You can either use Component for sharper imagery, or SCART for better colors. There's an experimental mode called the MX mode, which will make the GC Video X more closely match the color balance of the official GameCube component cables, which basically boils down to tinting it slightly green. It's a neat idea though. Badass Consoles is still uncertain that this feature will make it into the final firmware, but the idea is pretty neat. The GC Video X also taps into the digital audio in the GameCube. I didn't even know the GameCube had a digital audio stream to tap into. So not only do I have a better video signal than the component cables, but I also don't have to deal with two sets of cables in order to get video and audio output at the same time. That is really cool. In conclusion, the GC Video X offers mildly better video quality than the component cables and aren't as expensive or cumbersome to incorporate in your workflow. The GC Video X also has neutral colors, which is pretty nice. Before this, I was using the OSSC to convert my GameCube component cables into HDMI. This was convenient because I can split the HDMI and have one go to the TV and the other go to my capture card. As it turns out though, the OSSC mildly darkens the image, so the GC Video X is definitely a more convenient and higher quality solution than that when it comes to both the video and the audio. I've been talking to badass consoles about whether or not the GC Video X could output the native GameCube video signal of YCBCR in the future, and he said it's something he might look into. 
For now though, this is my new go-to method for recording GameCube video because the slight differences in video quality are either because it's objectively better than component or it just upsamples the image slightly differently. That's all my impressions for now. Uh, I hope you found our video test really helpful. Uh, I know for me, I was really just hoping the HDMI out would look significantly better than the component before I bought it because it was hard to find a high quality comparison of all these video outs before I did so. I feel kind of bad for the Wii because there is no great video out option. In the future I'll show off how bad the Wii U output looks in comparison, but just trust me when I say there's no good option for the Wii. So if anyone finds out about HDMI mods or anything for that, let me know. I'm curious. And if there's any video comparisons you want us to do in the future, just uh, leave it in the comment section below. Maybe we're interested in doing it ourselves. I know the next one of these videos we're going to do is the OSSC versus the Meister. Um, also, be sure to subscribe so that way you're around by the time we get around to do that video. Oh, and uh, thanks for watching this video. Gigaboots has been brought to you by our magnificent God King executive producers. Vincent Pover, Cywolf, Nicholas Cameron, Peter Meekum, E. Lee Broyles, Unit Number Two, Joshua Mattingly, Brendan O'Sullivan, Star Falcon, Trouncing Trogdor, and Spaceman Spiff. Thank you to all of our magnificent God King executive producers. And also these guys. Head on over to patreon.com slash gigaboots today and become one of these names.